Hey, it's me, Vicky Marie. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in this crazy world we live in. Now, tonight I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, I don't know why I'm laughing. I mean, it's a serious case. It's a serious case. Let's have a think about fantasies. Fantasies, fetishes. We all have them. Come on, admit it. What is yours? A bit of bondage. Dressing up. Uniforms, doctors and nurses, foot fetish, do you like storms, dominatrices, master and slave, fantasies and fetishes are countless and complex. No one really understands why we have them. But for most of us, they're a bit of fun with our partner and the privacy of the bedroom. But for others, they become obsessions, controlling that side of their life. That's the only way that they can get their pleasure. And these people, they pay handsomely to see their fetishes carried out. And this has become easier, of course, with the advent of the internet. So in this case, what we're going to talk about is one such seller of fantasies. A woman named the Stiletto Goddess. A mistress of fetish, popular all over the world. And apparently, her, um, her area of expertise, let's say, was crushing, which apparently is a fetish in high demand all over the world. So, but this fetish crossed from the internet into real life, and it resulted in a horrific murder. Let's chat. So, the stiletto goddess. Let's have a look at a photo of her and her husband. This is the stiletto goddess and her husband. Philip Riley is the name of the husband. And Tracy Seward is the name of the aptly named stiletto goddess. Now Tracy and Philip Briley, they're from Manchester, very near where I used to live, very, very near. I'm going to show you on a map in a moment. And they met when they were only very young and they started a relationship. And they had a relationship that lasted 20 years. Although they had three children together, they never married. Eventually, they went to live in Sale, which is an affluent suburb of Manchester. Now, this is where I'm going to show you where it is. As I say, very close to where I used to live. I used to live in Charlton Cum Hardy. That's where I was born. And Sale is here. And there's a water park in Sale 
that comes very important in this case. So let's have a look where it is in sort of relation to Manchester. So Manchester city centre is here. Sale is one of these very affluent um, suburbs. I mean, where I lived wasn't affluent, not then. It was a council estate. So I believe Charlton, Charlton cum Hardy, where I used to live, apparently now is very much in demand. But it wasn't then. <laughs> It was a council estate, but sale has always been sort of a little bit upmarket. You know, if it's like a, uh, an affluent suburb, you would say, sort of on the outskirts of Manchester. And sale leisure centre, there's a water park nearby there. It's just, it's a lovely place, sale. And very popular, as I say. So if we have a look where Manchester is in context for the UK, we look at we're in the north of the UK. Yeah, up in the north in Manchester. And that's where this couple lived to all intents and purposes happily. You know, sales a nice place to live. It's like, you know, it would be an enjoyable place to live. Now, somewhere along the line, and that's not clear where that happened, this couple began to become interested and to practice bondage, sadomasochism. Uh, Tracy would dress up as a dominatrix with the stilettos, etc. You know, it's not clear exactly when that started. But at some point in their romantic journey, they developed a liking for bondage, etc. Tracy was the dominatrix, and this was a role that she seemed to revel in. And they soon realised there was money to make, be made from this. There was money with the, as I say, with the dawn of the internet, there was good money to be made by offering a, a website with these sort of with tracy being the dominatrix philip i don't know if he was the brains behind it or whether she was the brains behind it i don't know if he was the instigator of it i don't know if she was the instigator of it they were together from when when they were very young so i don't know and eventually they were together 20 years so that i would presume that they both quite liked it Anyway, as I say, the dawn of the internet meant that they could reach out to clients all over the world. And Tracy offered a very special service, not offered to uh, by many of these kind of sites. And this is a fetish called crushing. Now, have you heard of it? I certainly hadn't. And when this case came to light, even hardened police officers had not heard of this vile practice, and it is vile. So I'm not going to go into it in too much detail because it's just horrible. I thought I'd heard it all, but this was a new one on me too. So crushing apparently is the literal crushing of small animals and invertebrates such as worms with a stiletto heel and this was the service that tracy offered her many many fans crushing and hurting little animals once even a kitten hamsters and then other sort of invertebrates such as worms and things like that. What a lovely woman. I mean, I've got a name for her, but I can't say it on YouTube. Lovely woman. But, believe, but it starts with C and it ends with T. Nice fans, lovely fans. I mean, who would pay for that? Who would pay for it? What, what's wrong with these people? 
anyway what is wrong with people because you know you always think oh i i always think i'm a very open-minded person really really do believe that as long as it's not hurting anybody and it's legal there's nothing wrong with you know uh, fetishes fantasies uh, role play sex etc you know it's natural um to experiment i think and things that you know i do think that's completely natural but when it comes to hurt it you know to get in pleasure of of real pain of animals and you know so it's not even like you no know, i can even see it with bondage because it's too you know it's, it's uh consenting adults doing whatever there's normally rules in place and you know there's a, a, a process to it there's a um what's with nobody's ever really hurt that's the idea that is not the point of bondage even the slave you know is giving permission uh for what is happening to them and it's you know there are boundaries that you just don't cross there's a lot of respect involved in bondage and uh, say don't masochism etc it's not like just do going and really hurting somebody it's not about that uh, but this is and not only that it's about hurting innocent animals disgusting that people would pay for this and that she would be prepared to do it and that, you know i'm not excusing philip in this either that he was obviously knew about it and was involved with it so they had a great lifestyle because of this because of the money that was pouring in from these vile videos on her website then one day tracy gained a new fan a man called gioni prevalati prevat gosh can't pronounce his name i don't care really gioni prevatali now let's have a look at him Now, by now, Tracy, Tracy uh, was, I think, 42 by now, uh, maybe a bit younger, maybe 38. And uh, Gioni, he was only 26. And he was the son of a Swiss policeman. And he lived in Geneva. And he, um, or, or anyway, lived in Switzerland. Sorry, I'm not absolutely sure that it was Geneva. But he was obsessed with Tracy. He found this website. He was very rich. And him and Tracy developed a relationship that became more than just an internet relationship. And what happened was Tracy actually she was her head was turned by his youth. 26 years old his wealth he was a wealthy guy and so tracy left philip and went to live with gianni in switzerland for some time she would go quite often philip was devastated he always begged her to come back to him and she did eventually go back to him but what poor philip did not know was that she had made a plot with her lover to be free of him for good and the lovers had also persuaded a neighbour to help out by telling him wrongly that Philip had hurt a child. And this guy was 37-year-old security guard Christopher Cassidy, who was a neighbour who also lived in Sale. I don't know if he was a client of Tracy's, but anyway, this is him. Christopher Cassidy so somehow they talked him into joining in their scheme to dispose of Philip so this affair that she start Tracy and Gioni started led to a series of separations from Philip but she would always return to the family home in Armsby Avenue in Sale. However, she still continued the affair 
with Per, uh, per Vitali, who was then, by then he'd come to England to live. And eventually, uh, Philip Riley found him, beat him up, and the couple fled to Northern Ireland. Apparently, while they were in Ireland, they read a book about the perfect murder. And Tracy said to Gioni, they would never be free until Philip was dead. Two months later, she agreed to return to live with Philip on a trial basis. But she continued her affair with Gioni and eventually they hatched this murder plot. Apparently, uh, Tracy herself tried unsuccessfully to kill Philip with sleeping pills and a campaign of persuasion was then launched to draw uh, Mr. Cassidy, Christopher Cassidy into the plan. So Previtali returned to Switzerland and he sent Christopher a package containing an ornamental candle holder with the murder weapon, an antique revolver and 12 bullets hidden inside the hollow base. Then Tracy persuaded Philip to go with her to a disused garage in Cross Street in Sale, which Christopher uh, Cassidy, who was a security guard, was guarding. Apparently, what happened was she pretended to fall over and as Philip leaned over to get her up, to help her up, uh, Christopher Cassidy shot him three times in the head. He was not dead yet and apparently Christopher was about to fire a further shot but Tracy delayed him. She appeared to be enjoying his suffering. It's like a crushing now of a person, isn't it? It's the ultimate crushing fetish or fantasy. And then Christopher fired the fourth and final shot. So it was Christopher Cassidy who fired all the shots. They then took the body home to the family home. Where were her children? Where were her children? How old were her children? Who was looking after the children? I mean, maybe they were grown up by then because they were together 20 years, so it's possible, I suppose. But anyway, so they drove the poor Philip's body to the family home where the garage was cleaned and the gun and shells were thrown into the River Mersey near Sale Water Park. Gosh, that, I used to go walking there a lot with dog. I used to take do, a lot of dogs. Um, I used to work for a charity called Assist. And what we used to do was like, you know, someone was disabled or people who had MS or various illnesses and they had pets, you know, that they no longer could take out. I used to go and take these dogs out. I remember a little West Highland white. Uh, terrier that I used to take to Sail Water Park all the time. Anyway, the next day, uh, Pre uh, Previtali came from Switzerland and he and Christopher drove the body back to the garage where Christopher was guarding and it was Gioni Previtali who cut it into pieces, dismembered it. After he dismembered it, they encased the body parts in concrete and threw them into the canal. And Previtali flew back to Switzerland and Tracy told her relatives that Philip had left, taking all his fetish clothes with him. So she just told everyone he just decided to leave. So suspicions were roused in her family because she seemed totally unconcerned as to where he was. Finally, his remains were discovered in three different locations in the River Mersey and the Bridgewater Canal in Greater Manchester on the 28th of July 2001.
just puts you off going into rivers doesn't it and that you no know, people do this wild swimming don't they where they're in rivers i'd be terrified you were going to find a dead body anyway he had been shot in the head and his body was then cut into seven parts and cased in concrete so how was this plot revealed how was this all found out about well unbelievably tracy who you know seems like they all were these type of people you know so there's um tracy and poor philip let's just have this is Gioni, her young lover and this is christopher cassidy i think he was 37 who helped um well, who shot, who actually killed Philip. He was the one who killed him. You know, again, these criminal masterminds think they're such criminal masterminds. But in the meantime, Tracy was bragging about it on her website, bragging about the fact that she'd killed her husband. Did you really think nobody would dob her in? You know, and even though they, to me, they're pretty sick if they want to watch her crushing animals, uh, you know, that's pretty sick as far as I'm concerned. But even those sickos, they're not quite as sick that they'll condone murder. And what happened was one of her fans, an American fan, phoned the police or contacted the police. And that is how it all got found out. So Gioni and Tracy... The police went round to Tracy's house to arrest her and she was in bed with Gioni at the time. So that made the police's job a lot easier because they were actually caught together. So they were arrested on suspicion of murder. And when Christopher Cassidy heard about this, Christopher turned himself in. And Christopher went straight to the police station and started singing like a canary because he he just he heard what was going on he just went straight down there and he told them everything he gave himself up voluntarily and confessed to everything so at the trial they all did plead guilty but tracy tried to say that briarly had abused her and she came out with a litany of things that supposedly Philip had done to her well to be fair maybe he did but the thing is there's nothing more irritating than that as far as I'm concerned Philip cannot defend himself it's all right I say no he did this and he did that but there's no proof often with domestic abuse you know it is just one person's word against the others and to be fair I, I don't think I tend to take Tracy's word for it now philip was involved in all this uh crushing website as well so although obviously you know i'm not condoning the fact that philip was murdered i have less sympathy than i might have had because he was condoning you know the the murder of animals you know the crushing of kittens and hamsters and you know the, uh, so it's difficult to find loads of sympathy for him even though you know uh obviously you know i don't condemn uh, condone murder in any circumstance i don't even believe in the death penalty but you know it just gives you a little bit more limited sympathy when you think of what he was condoning and enjoying as you know a turn on anyway in 2007 tracy seward seward from sale and her two accomplices a Swiss lover, a 26-year-old Swiss lover, Giona Previtali, and security guard Christopher Cassidy, also from Sale, were all given life sentences at Manchester Crown Court after admitting the murder of Philip Briley. Now, I don't know uh, what the minimum was, but they've got life sentences. So this was 2007. So... You know, let's hope they've still got a long time to go. And apparently the judge said, this is as dramatic, emotional and complicated a murder case as could spring from the most fertile imagination of a dramatist. I mean, what are we always saying? Truth is stranger than fiction. 
you couldn't make this shit up could you it's like you know it it is like something you cannot imagine that's real it's a classic case of cold-blooded murder with malice aforethought a crushing blow for those three anyway rest in peace philip but also all the animals that you encouraged tracy seward to kill so i think this is like a tale uh, uh, the lessons we can learn from this i think is this is uh, how fantasy and reality really can get all mixed up and you know where fantasy goes into reality and results in horrific acts doesn't it so yeah rest in peace philip all those little animals she killed um please remember to like and subscribe this video uh, to the sorry please remember to like this video if you found it interesting and if you enjoy my content why not subscribe it's free did you know that 90 percent of people who watch videos don't subscribe to the channel so please subscribe and i'll see you really soon in the next video Oh, let me get allowed to say goodbye face to face. So I'll see you really soon in the next video. And until then, may your God always go with you. Bye. <laughs>